BizQuick podcast hits on the struggles and advantages of being an entrepreneur. It's for anyone who's made the commitment to burn the boats and not look back. Are you a busy entrepreneur or small business owner trying to do it all? Then this podcast is for you. Corey and Julie will take you through the details of building a strong business. Hit the subscribe button and gear up for another episode of Biz Quick Podcast. Hello and welcome to Biz Quick. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And on today's show, we have, well, who we call Maddie. Maddie Simo. He is the owner of footballcontest.com. He basically does proxy betting for anyone who enters contests in Las at any Las Vegas casino and doesn't actually live in Las Vegas and you have to submit your picks in person so we know maddie because we're degenerates we're degenerates and we have been i have personally been using maddie's service since 2011 (laughs) so just to explain to everybody out there exactly what this proxy service is so these contests uh you have to be in vegas to sign up for these contests as part of nevada rules or whatever uh and so you go to Las Vegas, you go to the sports book, you sign up for the contest, and then somebody like Maddie can be your proxy for that contest. So you sign up, it's in your name, um, you're responsible for payment, etc., and then you pay somebody else to place your bets for you every week in these contests. So we do the super contest every year, and um, it's a out of the Westgate uh, fun contest. We are just horrible at it. This and year, this year we've Ooh, just been we're really bad, really bad at it. But but what what you know? Every week we get the the lines for the week. We pick our games that we want. We give them to Maddie. He takes them in on you know Saturday or whatever time and places all the bets for everybody. And it's a interesting concept. And like I'm I'm curious to see how he really got into it um, because it's one of those things like for like the Westgate, for example, there's thousands of entries that come in and he and Tony have the vast majority of people going through them. So they created this, this business model where if if I'm in Vegas and I'm signing up for this and I'm like, Oh crap, I need a proxy. There's the one proxy. Now there's plenty of proxies out there. I'm sure who are also trying to get into the game, but, but they have it. football contest has it covered. Like they, they have the lion's share and then some of, of all the entries. Yeah. They've had a lot of the winners in the past. Um, and, uh, interestingly enough, in addition to their proxy, the proxy service that Maddie and, and is, um, I'm assuming Tony's a business partner with him on football contest. Um, I guess we'll clarify that once Maddie joins. Um, he's also a writer, a sports writer and is, um, really good at, um, marketing and content management and, and whatnot. He has a um, company that is also called Content Champs Consulting, where he does um, sports writing. They have online marketing solutions. So uh, he's got a diverse background there, um, and but still in that sports field. So he's kind of hit the lottery. And he wrote for, and um, any, any of our listeners who are degenerate, degenerate gamblers, will know um, about Don Best. So Don Best Sports um, puts out a lot of like lines and does gambling and whatnot. So that's he's got a pretty diverse background there. Yeah, and, and uh, I think what we're going to talk to him about today, and we never know where the conversation really goes, but what we want to talk to him about today is just that kind of specialization in uh, how it works out for a while, but if you're not with the times, if you don't have your ear to the ground, so to speak, that... Uh, that specialization can be a huge detriment because as laws change, as the world changes, et cetera, as of right now, you need a proxy to do all of your gambling in Las Vegas on these contests. But as Las Vegas uh, maybe sees a dip in the amount of people participating because they can go elsewhere, they can do it online, they they don't need it, are they going to then open it up to, oh, well, you can just register online and make your own picks and you, we know not we no longer need a proxy service and how to react to that because it's one of those things that when we first started and I have no idea what it was like when you first started but <clears throat> when you and I started doing this the 
it, it was by email. We would get an email with lines. We would make our picks, and then we would just send them an email back. And it was a very strict form. You know, it's like team name, uh, entry number, and then the picks, and that was it. It was just like here it is. And then I'm sure it was a huge pain for them where they just have to go in with their emails and two thousand entries or whatever it is every week make those picks. Um, I'm sure it was time consuming. And then, I mean, just within the past two years, I th- want to say last year was the first year they had a website. Mm-hmm. So all of your picks had to go through a website, which was nice, was nice. But also I was like, it's 2019. It took you long enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. One, um, real quick, um, fascinating fact, and then we should probably wrap up and, um, oh, we've still got time. Fantastic. I was thinking that we were. We were pushing the limit here, right? I don't, I'm not the timekeeper. I'll tell you when it's time, all right? Yeah, that's generally <laughs> what happens. Um, my first, the first time I dra- joined um, the Super Contest, right? And it, when I joined it, it was still the Hilton Super Con, the Hilton Challenge, because Hilton owned it. And then um, the Westgate ended up buying the Hilton property, right? So now it's the, you know, this it's just called the, the Football Super Contest or the Westgate Super Contest. Westgate, yeah. Westgate, yeah. Um, my first, um, team name and we always try and come up with really so every year for the past few years now it's been me Corey, and my brother mark we do this contest together right we go to vegas we spend you know two or three days in vegas sometimes it's just 24 hours sometimes that was a good year <laughs> <laughs> um and we pick a team name and then we um you know we go and last year we tried to come up with a really clever name and they wouldn't let us have it it yeah. was uh it's something about a high profile person that did not kill himself in right jail. on <laughs> yes and they were like ah you can't use that um but um my and the reason being is th- that espn occasionally shows names on like they'll flash like the winners or people who are doing well or whatever and they said if we flash your name espn aka disney isn't gonna like that this person didn't kill himself right <laughs> My first team name was called 3-2 Hop, an ode to the craps table. I think I had one big on a on a craps play um, several weeks before I went to Vegas and laid all my money on the line and for that contest. all downhill since then. Jeez. Right on. Well, I've had some good times gambling, but definitely this year is a down year, and I hope Maddie didn't look up our record before we go. Uh, I hope so, too. <laughs> I hope he did not uh, as well. But. All right. Let's wrap it up. We'll bring Maddie in on the other side. We've launched a whole new coaching program aimed at helping small business owners accelerate their revenue. This one-on-one, well, technically two, coaching is built around your schedule and your goals and will help keep you on track to make your business a success. There are no strings attached, no long commitments, and at $600 a month, it's priced perfectly for any small business owner. If you're struggling to find time to grow yourself and your business, or you want to find ways to improve your financial situation, Head on over to sbpace.com slash small dash business dash coaching to sign up. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the show. We've got Maddie on to talk about specialization, gambling, Vegas, whatever we feel like we're getting into today. Um, what's happening, Maddie? Not much. It's actually a, a cool, dark day here in Vegas after some abnormally uh, hot weather has, has come even into December. So we're, we're finally getting a little winter this week. Which means like 60 degrees and uh, overcast skies. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> I love Las Vegas. How, have, are you born and raised in Vegas, Maddie, or did you move there? No, I'm, I'm from the Midwest, from outside Chicago, about 30 miles west in the suburbs. And I uh, grew up there, went to college on the East Coast. And then for my professional life, I've spent uh, pretty much the whole time on the West Coast between Vegas and California. So Cool. That's, what suburb? That's... What suburb did you grow up in? I grew up in Glen Ellen. Illinois. Okay. Uh, I went to Glenbard West High School for those hilltoppers out there who might uh, recognize that name. But yeah, um, spent uh, a lot of time just in a bunch of different suburbs in, in the, the outside Chicago. My, my parents are from Chicago, born and raised. And yeah, and I just want to get out of the cold weather. So I moved out west after I got out of college and I've been here ever since. Does that make you a Bears fan? Uh, a fan is a strong word when it comes to them. I I grew up rooting for them, but the whole uh, lack of a quarterback situation over the past, I don't know, 20, 30 years since I've been a fan or since I was rooting for them, it's kind of just soured me on them. Uh, I do like Justin Fields quite a bit, and I, I hope that once they get rid of Nagy like everyone wants them to, they'll have a future. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of bailed on them 
when the when the Raiders came to Vegas and that that whole coincided with Trubisky and that whole mess. So I kind of I'm rude for the Raiders for the most part right now. But yeah, I I don't wish the the Bears uh, any ill will outside of them just getting rid of Nagy at this point. Well, yeah, and, and I, I think I don't know for some reason I, I I'm a big fan of the Raiders as well. I'd always just have kind of rooted for them, especially growing up. Uh, you know, playing uh they're bullies that's why well sure but you know <laughs> bo jackson uh oh yeah was now that, that was a huge part of you know tech mobile when i was growing up so <laughs> um so that that was one of those things and yeah i mean the raiders also i mean they had a good run and then they you know they kind of had some bad years as well yeah so. they're a mess right now as well but hopefully they can write the ship next year I don't, i'm kind of writing off the rest of this year if they do anything great but i mean it, the last two weeks pretty much say it all i mean them beating Dallas and knocking out a bunch of people out of the survivor on Thanksgiving day. Um, and then uh, coming back and losing to the Washington football team last week, I, I was at that game and it was very frustrating. So that, that kind of sums up their season in two weeks. Yes, it does. But let's jump into business. Cause that's what this podcast yep. is all about. We would love to talk sports and, and uh, gambling with you, which we might still do. But. We're going to, <laughs> yes. cause I have a very important question but, for Maddie, but I'll save it for the end. Yes. But, <laughs> Um, so how did you get into the proxy business? We explained everything on the front end there. Um, and it's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you are basically the proxy. There's obviously some smaller people out there, but if somebody wants to be a proxy, they have to, like, they're probably going to use you. So how did you kind of build that business? How did you get into it? Um, that type of stuff. Yeah, well, my partner, Tony, who you guys know well, um, as well, we've started working together for a sports betting information business back in 2005 and um that's where we met um there's obviously a lot of gambling con sports betting contacts that we had made when we worked at this company i i think i worked there for about three years and she worked there a little less than that she got out a little earlier but uh when we did work at that company we kind of found out the super contest was only a few hundred people at the time so we had served as proxies for some of our uh kind of um, clients at the company putting picks in like on our lunch breaks for like one or two people basically. And um, then when we left the company, we kept in touch with those people. And then Tony and I had talked about like working together and kind of building a business out of this because we figured, Hey, if these contests grow like we think they will, then two is better than one. It's hard for one person to do all the work. Um, so we had talked about that and we started working together. I think around 2009, like after, so it was a year after um, I'd gotten out of that company and we sm started small. We had about 10 clients and then the next year we had 20 and then the next year we had a hundred and then we had 500 and, then the contests, you know, as as we grew, the contest grew. We we um, built a, a good website, which later has become footballcontest.com that brings people in. Anyone who's looking for information on the big Las Vegas football contest, go to Google, Yahoo, whatever, you're going to find us and you're going to find out information on the, those contests and realize that you can enter if you don't live in Nevada because the basically early on in these contests, the whole idea of a football contest is to bring people into the sports book and into the casino. That's why for a long time, none of them charged, had a rake or anything like that. They just had a flat fee you entered and then you put your picks in every week as a local for the most part, I would say probably like 95% of the people back in the day, the football contest started out mostly just locals. And that is over the years, obviously, switched where the locals are really a minority and most of the people who enter these contests are from outside the state of Nevada. And the one legal aspect of that is that in order to participate in the contest, you need to have a proxy who's going to physically put in the picks for you every week within the state lines. So that's kind of the, the legal part of it. And that's where we come in is we're the middleman between you signing up for the contest and then you kind of hand the baton to us. And then we communicate throughout the season and put the picks in at the sports book every week. So that's kind of the contests have grown exponentially 
um, over the years where it's gone from, I think when Tony and I started working together, the super contest was the big one and they had 345 entries. And now you had the circa million this year that had over 4,000 entries and the super contest has had over 3000 entries in the past. So you're talking about, you know, more than a 10 times growth over the past 15 years since we've been doing this. So it's uh, a lot of it's getting the word out and communication and celebrities getting involved. You guys telling your friends about it. Um, and, and hopefully us, I mean, we, we like to think that we're, we deserve a little credit cause we get out there and promote the contest and promote the sports books and let people know that they can participate if they're outside Nevada. Yeah. I, I will say your big lucky break in the beginning came when, or the super contest, big lucky break in the beginning came when Bill Simmons joined in 2010 and Correct, yeah. when, he was still, he was writing for ESPN. He had, I think just started Grantland and he was in the super contest and he wrote about it every week. And I had never yeah. even heard of it until that happened. Then I was like, dang, I got to join this contest. And then yeah. I, I can remember like looking up the rules, trying to like, what do I need to do to join it? And then, um, you know, Googling like super contest proxy and voila, Inter Here we are, yeah. Maddie and Tony, yeah. yeah. So for ten years later, y'all are like still our people. Yeah, we appreciate that, and that's kind of how we've built our business. Is once we grab you guys as a client, you guys tell your friends, they tell their friends, and all of a sudden, between that and just kind of social media and our website presence, um, that's really kind of built our business. And we, our goal every year is to make sure you guys have a good enough time that you want to come back the next year, which you guys have done multiple times. Some people, it's just a bucket list item. They just want to enter one time and see how they do. Some guys go into it thinking that, and they finish in the money and they go, all right, well, I got a free ride for next year and they come back. So it's a, uh, it's an interesting cycle, but I mean, our goal is to keep our clients like any uh, business. You want to keep your customers happy and make sure that they're having a fun experience so that it's a long-term relationship that we have and not just like a one and done situation do you know um maddie do you know the uh, the average lifetime value of your of your customers that you have i don't i mean a lot a lot of people i mean we, we send basically i take my client list and then market to them the very next year um and try to grab as many of them back as i can but yeah i haven't really done like a lot of uh like analysis of it but i mean I like to think like at least half the people come back the next year, maybe more. And then, you know, um, we get a, a new batch every year that, that wants to do it for the first time or, you know, had a ex bad experience maybe with another proxy and we picked them up, something like that. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's a very good question. I mean, I, hopefully it's higher than 50%, you know, but I, I don't know. But I think a lot of that comes down to, those people that are participating again, we do have a lot of, you know, long-term customers who are regular players. The pandemic played a part in some people staying away last year. Last year was our probably lowest um, year that we had in probably more than five years. And then this year we ended up doing more than we ever have. So um, it, it's kind of just been, it's been a crazy couple of years, but um, as you can see with the, with the, the way the contests have grown, I mean, the super contest kind of had to take a different, um, direction this year with having some in-season contests to make that themselves more unique again and draw people in. And you guys are familiar with that, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of just constant evolution. You've got other companies like DraftKings that have contests and people that are able to participate in multiple States without having to visit a brick and mortar sports book. So that that's kind of, perhaps going to be the future, but hopefully, hopefully not for a few more years where, you know, the, the Vegas places like Circa and the Westgate can still kind of rule the contest at least for a few more years, like I said, so we can stay in business. That was going to be my question is like how you're preparing for the future because of that reason where like, for instance, here in Virginia, we, the, you know, DraftKings or the MGM or whatever, like you can gamble online when it comes to sports betting. And <clears throat> so there's really no reason for uh, somebody to make that pilgrimage to Vegas to sign up for a contest because they can just do it from the comfort of their couch. 
Um, do you see Las Vegas changing anything that they're doing to compete with um, with these online companies? And, and like, how do you see yourself kind of playing into that? Yeah, I mean, for, for the near future, I don't just because the way the laws are here, they, there's not like the ability for them to um, allow people to participate in the contest online or to sign up for an account and deposit from outside the state, all that stuff has to be done within the state. So you could, you could sign up for maybe like a, a Westgate Superbook account, betting account, but to but deposit into place bets, you still need to be within the state. You can't do it across state lines. So with the, with these contests, they are handicapping contests versus betting contests. And that's something I think that's kind of a fine line that people lose sight of is as you guys know that they're we're playing with static lines so it's not like the lines are changing um and that makes it a handicapping contest versus a betting contest and that's why we're able to do what we do because it's a it's a straight handicapping contest and that allows us to communicate with you guys get your picks and submit all that stuff um through our website and in the past we've done it through email but if it was a betting if it was pure betting you know, we wouldn't be able to do it. That that would be breaking the law. So like a, a lot of our clients will say, Hey, can you throw a hundred dollars on the chiefs to win the Super Bowl for me? And we have to say no, because that's, uh, that's something that would be, you know, illegal for us to do. But, um, you know, with the contest, we have a contract with you guys, you guys are signing up and putting our names on your entry form. It's, it's, there's a, a legal, um, kind of connection between us and you to, to submit the picks for the contest. But um, yeah, I think here it's still a few more years before they kind of uh, take a different kind of approach with that stuff, because the bottom line, like I'd mentioned earlier, what a lot of people do sight of with the contest is that they bring you into the sports book, into the physical sports book in the casino where like a DraftKings, they're, they're trying to get you to put money into your account to sign it, to enter a contest or, to, to bet at their sports book and that their sports book might not be like a brick and mortar location. Most of it's done online through a website, through an app and things like that. Um, sports books here like Westgate and, and Circa, they still depend on a lot of like uh, foot traffic coming into the casinos and coming into the, yeah, into the sports book to, to make wagers and things like that, to deposit money into their accounts physically and to bet within the state, knowing that, and their belief obviously is that they, they still are, have the best books in the world and um, are going to treat it that way and hope that people realize that and keep coming out year after year to, to do their contests as well. And uh, I, I would agree that, I mean, there's uh, like definitely a, there's an allure to going to Vegas. There's an allure to going to, to uh, a sports book instead of just sitting at home and just, you know, making, making plays off your couch using your phone. Um, so that's definitely something that Vegas will always have over, over DraftKings or, or whatever, assuming that. Well, yeah. And I wouldn't say always, always, because I mean, because uh, there's going to be more sports books and more States and all that stuff's going to change. I mean, I'd like to hope that it lasts another 10 years or so where Vegas is still known as the sports betting capital of the world. And, you know, the books here, I hope, hope the same thing, but I mean, it, it is changing. The landscape is changing. It's just, they still want to make sure that they have the best contests in the world. You know, if, if Circa is guaranteeing $4 million in their survivor pool, at least um, what, what other survivor pool in the world legally ha can lay a uh, claim to that? You know what I mean? Same with the Circa million and the super contest. You know, they get people to sign up. Hopefully they get thousands of people to enter. I mean, granted, if, if they open it up online, they could have tens of thousands of people to do it. But um, I mean, the thing is, they're, they're not making any money on it. You know what I mean? So they're depending on you guys coming into the book when you come in, you know, you'll buy a, a sandwich at the deli or whatever. You'll you'll play a little blackjack, whatever that you're actually doing something else besides just signing up for the contest. And that well, that's what I meant by the 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 allure to Vegas. Like I like, yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's true. I, I, I mean, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I mean, I hope hopefully for a long time that that is the case. You're right. There is nothing better than Vegas. And I mean, I, even compared to like, you know, Atlantic city or Reno or Tahoe, like Vegas, just Vegas is King, man. And I, 
I love Vegas and I've given Vegas more money than anything, anybody else. But, uh, and you know, I, now I'm like, Ooh, Corey, it sounds like there's more gambling contests that we need to join next year. There are. And I was hoping you weren't catching on to that. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, so where do you, do you see long-term like your proxy business, um, existing, or do you think that you'll have to continue to make these, you know, pivots over time where you're directionally changing by a degree or two. And then eventually in the next, you know, I don't know, seven to 10 years, it looks completely different because of the way that gambling is changing. Yeah. I mean, I think seven to 10 years, it's, uh, I, I would be surprised if, if we were to do this podcast, say, you know, t- even 2025 or, you know, four or five years from now, um, I'd be super ecstatic if, if we're still in a position where we're doing what we're doing at, at the same kind of uh, level. I mean, I thought the last couple of years that maybe things would level off a little bit. And maybe like if a DraftKings did do a contest that maybe people wouldn't feel the need to go to Vegas and maybe they the entries would kind of cap out a little bit. I mean, I think you saw with the super contest the last couple of years um, with Circa coming out on the scene is that they started going down. Uh, they, I mean, they, they took a big hit last year where Circa had three times as many entries as them and had as many entries as they had at their all, you know, all time high three years ago. I think it was one, two, or, yeah, or yeah, two or three years ago, something like that. Um, so there's a, you know, that's competition too. You have competition that comes, comes on the scene and, and kind of steals your thunder a little bit where, you know, the super contest for a long time, and you guys have been part of it has been known as the, the, the best handicapping contest in the world. That's not necessarily the case anymore. You know, the circa million guarantees money uh, in a prize pool. That's like a guaranteed $1 million winner. This, um, I mean, granted the super contest had that a few years ago. They, they were the first contest to have a million dollar winner, but they don't have a guaranteed prize pool. So, you know, it depends on how many people enter. They have to hit a certain number of people to make that possible. They need to get 3000 entries. So if they don't get that many, which this year, they had, you know, over 2000, which was nice, but it's still not like the level that they were a few years ago. So, um, but they introduced the in-season contest to try and make things more unique and get people to sign up. Now, next year, uh, with hopefully things settling down with COVID and everything, you know, people will be more comfortable than ever coming to Vegas. I still saw like a little um, apprehension from some people who still weren't comfortable coming out here. But um, next year, hopefully, it's going to be no holds barred and you'll see all time records set in both contests. But it's just it's hard to say what, what happens if DraftKings on, comes on the scene and they, they want to guarantee money or something like that. It's just it's hard, hard to say if, if, if they're in more states as well. Um, maybe Circa gets out to different parts of the country or in Westgate as well. They're both in Colorado. Maybe they get out to New Jersey and become a force out there. Now the tricky thing that that's, I don't know how DraftKings has been able to do is they've been able to pool the money for the contest together, which for the West game circa they've, they've said from the start, if they have presences in other States, it would be, have to be a separate pool. So if you entered in Colorado, it's going to, you can only compete against people who enter in Colorado. So the pool would be, you can't link up Colorado, Nevada, New Jersey, that kind of thing to have like this massive super super duper contest you know um it's got to be separate so um and and that's where legally something would have to change to be able to allow like the states to pool the money kind of like a lottery or something like that and i I think that's still it's going to keep us in business for a few more years and it's still going to help the contest in vegas be the biggest and the best for the time being and for the near future Excellent. Well, we need to start wrapping up, but I do have one final question for you. Um, yes. Can you please tell me that we are not the only team that just has completely sucked this year? This has been <laughs> the worst year ever for us. I mean, we literally maybe have three weeks where we have a winning record. Yeah, it's been it's been horrendous. It's been really it's bad, Maddie. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not the only ones. I mean, if you look at the standings and how many people are in there, it's it's you're definitely not the only ones. I mean, uh, I know you guys have been in the super contest for years, but the funny thing about Circa and the Circa Million is that they award a booby prize to like the worst record every quarter, 
And then overall, like you could win a hundred thousand dollars. If you finish dead last for the season, you could win $25,000 every quarter. If you're the worst record, there was a guy, we had somebody who went three and 17, I think last this quarter that just wrapped up <laughs> and he, he, it wasn't bad enough. You had to go two and 18 oh. to win the $25,000. So <laughs> we, that's, we wouldn't that's have won that of, either. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is like the worst part is kind of just being right in the middle because um, it's frustrating because you kind of think that you could have a shot if you go on a run, but the great thing about those in-season contests, especially with for, with you guys, I mean, you can say, look, I, we have a lot of clients that are like just 500 or maybe have a losing record the whole season. And then if you could just find a way to get hot for four weeks, you, you could win, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or you, whatever the, the quarterly is or the three week prize, the six week prize. Um, I mean, th- those are out there and that's, that's what makes it fun too, is it keeps you engaged the whole season. And I, I think, uh, the competition between Circa and Westgate has been good from that perspective where you're not just playing for season long prizes. You're playing for, Hey, I, I can get hot for three weeks and win something. Right. So hot like, for three you guys keep that in mind down the stretch. <laughs> hot for three Don't or four up. weeks. I'd settle for hot for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even <laughs> well, one two, you at this You get two point. good ones and then you never know. And then another, a third <laughs> one, you can win something oh, in the super contest. Yeah. It's cool. It's, it's, so we're silently judging each other all the time. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. It's okay. Don't beat yourselves up too much. You're not alone. <laughs> um, but before we go, is there anything that we can do for you, Maddie? Well, I mean, just get the word out. I mean, you've already done a great job by having me on here. But if anybody wants to go to footballcontest.com, that's my cheap plug of the day is go and find out about these different contests, what each of them have to offer. Some of them, I mean, there's a lot of college football fans out there. There's a couple college contests that that are going on. Uh, one ended a couple weeks ago. Um, that had a guaranteed million dollar prize pool, and they had a, an overlay of over five hundred thousand uh, dollars. That and some people won some good money in that. Um, you know that anything you can find out all the information on footballcontest.com. Find out about us. You know, learn a little bit more about our business. We've been around a long time, as you guys know, and we've tried to improve over the years and and do everything we can to keep our clients happy and uh yeah i mean we're, we're hoping to have you guys back next year and maybe get you into some more contests well, well, i think i think that's a guarantee maddie yeah that's a little... <laughs> excellent <laughs> yes but yeah we appreciate sure we appreciate you coming on the podcast and uh talking to us about uh gambling i wish we could have just made this a gambling contest or podcast but you know maybe next, next time. time next time yes uh um, anytime I'm, I'm available whenever you guys well, want to have me on so i really appreciate it next next year we'll have to have you on for our thanksgiving podcast where we talk about gambling yes yes <laughs> oh boy there you go <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah so thanks again maddie and thank you to thank all you of our, thank you to all of our listeners and everything that you'll need to know about this podcast and uh maddie will be in the show notes and if you want to work with us but you're not quite at the point yet where you can lay out the cash to do so we've got a ton of free content that is available on our website go check it out we also if you want to work with us and pay us we're here for that too and we're all about it you can connect with us on social media we are on linkedin tiktok instagram facebook and youtube and you can find out everything you need to know at sbpace.com and if you haven't already uh make sure to subscribe to this podcast give us a review download this episode rate it and reach out to us about any topics that you might want us to cover or if you want to be a guest on the podcast everything you need to know is out there on our website sbpace.com yeah and we have a best-selling book it's called seriously now what a small business guide to disaster preparedness it comes with a digital download workbook and if you've already purchased it head on back to amazon and rate and review it so that more people can find out about the book And that is it for today's podcast. I'm Corey. I'm Julie. And this was BizQuick, being a degenerate anywhere we want to. 